Good morning. So, I'm Amir Licht and I'll be your host for the rest of the morning. Uh, a rather passive uh, participant in, in, in this outfit. Um, this uh, is a panel on executive compensation and um, the way uh, we will hold it is uh, our three participants, uh, Michal Barzuza, Sharon Khanes and Ehud Kamar will make a short statement on, on the issues uh, and then we'll engage in some uh, back and forth uh, comments and we'll open the floor for questions and, and comments uh, from you uh, to, um, to motivate. The, I don't think we need to motivate the discussion. Okay, there's a lot of motivation. There's a lot of strong feelings uh, about the issue of uh, executive compensation. And um, you know, just, just by way of a reminder, uh, this is from the New York Times from the day before yesterday, for those of you who missed the newspaper. Uh, so there's a big item uh, saying CEO pay is rising despite the din. Uh, probably the most heard uh, complaint about big business these days, one seemingly tailored for the 99%, is how much money corporate CEOs routinely pull down. Many ordinary Americans probably cheered when stockholders, that is the people who actually own public companies, finally began to say, enough. Yeah, well. Despite a lot of noise from shareholders and a few victories at big names like Citigroup and Hewlett Packard, executive pay just keeps climbing. And this is, this is the, the, the whole issue. The notion that a lot of people believe that that, 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 is, that, that is too much. I mean, the kind of pay that certain executives in, in public companies uh, take home is just too much. And what I would like to kind of put for discussion here is uh, something more systematic, more, can't say scientific, but at least scholarly uh, discussion of the notion of too much. What do we mean when we say that executives take home too much? Is too much relative to, to shareholders? This is echoed in the opening sentences here in the New York Times item. Um, is too much relative to workers in the same fair? This is echoed in several bills that have been floored and discussed in the, um, in the Israeli uh, uh, public arena by politicians uh, primarily. Um, is it relative to, uh, to, to what? To ordinary citizens unrelated to the company? And if so, what is the basis, what is the justification for the notion that this is too much and, and something should be done uh, about this? And something, uh, a fourth meaning of too much, which I hope we'll have time to, to get to, uh, and my research uh, is more involved in, is too much relative to other countries. And again, is it so as an empirical uh, issue, as an empirical uh, matter? And if so, what? It, what does it mean and why would it matter that certain executives in certain countries make much more or just more than our own executives and so on and so forth. So this, these are the issues or these are the perspectives that I think the, concept, well, the problem of executive compensation should be discussed uh, and I'll just pass the floor uh, to our participants. Uh, Michal? Yes, thank you. So <laughs> I'm Khabar Zuza. I'm from the University of Virginia. Um, so I'll, I'll comment on the too much, your too much point. Um, I think that, uh, and um, Lucian has written about that uh, and others, uh, I think that the, 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 the too much point, you know, is, is a lot beyond too much. It's not only the size point. The reason people are bothered with executive compensation is because they have the intuition or the impression Oh, it's not working. That. Uh, it has a different purpose, the other one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, people tend to say, why, why do we care about executive compensation so much? Athletes are being paid a lot, and, 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 and the media stars are being paid a lot. Uh, but the issue is, as others have said, uh, the process is different, right? So, executive compensation process. Um, executive compensation is being set by directors. Uh, directors are, the executives have a role in appointing the directors, they have influence on appointing the directors. 
Uh, so in a way, when people say too much, this is also a reflection of their concerns about the process uh, in which directors are being, in which the compensation is uh, being set. And the other concern, I think, is about the relationship between the size and the performance. So uh, most times that people are concerned about the size, it's because they feel that the size does not reflect the performance, right? So uh, that um, comes up regarding severance packages, when people get high pay when they leave and it's not clear why it helps shareholders to give them this high pay, or when they get really high pay when they didn't really perform that well. So, um, so I think that uh, people say too much, but really it reflects um, more than that. It reflects concerns about the tie to performance and concerns about uh, the process in which this uh, price is set. So uh, what are the solutions, right, which is uh, another thing that we discuss. Um, in terms of the solution, I think that executive compensation for us from the, from the legal perspective and what we should do is a real challenge. It's a real challenge both because on the one hand it's in the heart of the agency problem, but on the other hand it is um, tied to markets and setting the right compensation is important and if we regulate it directly and set a compensation that is either too low or not tied to performance, it could be quite costly. So there is this tension between, on the one hand, we want to control it. There's lots of agency costs. On the other hand, the way, the right way to control it is difficult to find. And if we do the wrong thing, it could be costly. It could harm companies' ability to re retain their directors. Uh, it could harm incentives, and et cetera. So you know, I think that uh, the approach that has been uh, uh, adopted so far, uh, doing that through different dimensions, rather than looking for the one you know, magic solution, is probably the right approach, probably the only approach that we have. Uh, you know, continue working through disclosure. Uh, in the US, there has been a move to discussion and analysis of compensation, and uh, here too, and, and Jeff Gordon has written about that. I think that's a very good uh, development when uh, directors have to describe exactly uh, how they set the compensation, how it's tied to performance, uh, that improves um, not only what people understand, but also the process of setting that. They have to explain it to themselves, they have to explain it to others, um, and uh, et cetera. Uh, say on pay, which now uh, uh, at the Dodd-Frank has been um, improved. Um, shareholders have more say on uh, approving compensation. We have now results from the last proxy season. We see that uh, Shareholders in most, most, most cases follow the uh, management uh, recommendation. Only in few cases they didn't approve compensation, so Citigroup is one of them, Chesapeake was another. So that actually suggests that maybe that's, um, that was a good move. We don't see too much costs of shareholder approval requirement, uh, and we do see it as a kind of constraint on maybe the most outrageous uh, uh, cases. Um, I think two more things is, one is the courts. Um, so, you know, one important aspect of, of the U.S. regime is that in addition to these bright line rules of say on pay and independence requirement, et cetera, there are also um, uh, the court approach, which is a company by company and a case by case basis. And I think that's important because we see that compensation varies and there's some companies in which it's better, some companies in which it's worth. and um, um, so it's important to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. And I think that um, Delaware Court has made several steps that uh, make it more likely that they will look into compensation decisions uh, and, and um, that also uh, um, resulted in more settlements about compensation, etc. And the last point I'll make is that uh, I think the media also, so, so Amir just read this a New York Times uh, column, there are lots of them. I think the media has an important uh, role in executive compensation. So people used to uh, you know, criticize the media for being too uh, populist about that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it has an important role in constraining compensation. So the Dykens and Gallus paper that Bebchuk was discussing before, uh, another thing that it shows is that media um, has important role in restricting private benefits, uh, even when the law is not able to do that. So you know, people sometimes care more about or what's written 
about them in the Wall Street Journal than you know what their shareholders think about them. So um, that's another important aspect uh, in restraining executive compensation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll also try to make a statement. And I'm fortunate enough uh, to, spend, um, to spend most of my days in the academia, but from time to time I advise uh, compensation committee and self-dealing committees about uh, executive compensation. So I have a richer view of, a rich view of this subject. I'm not sure they have a rich understanding of, of it, but uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best. And uh, to, answer, to answer a question, I think that uh, the qu quick answer to the question, what is too much? So I think that the standard that executives should be paid in public firms are the so-called sole ownership standard. And I'm adopting, uh, Michal and I have the same mentor. He is sitting in this room, and I think he used this standard for other purposes. I, th I think this is the good standard here as well. If we have to compare it to something, we should ask, what would a sole owner pay the manager uh, under the same circumstances? It's not very easy to verify, but at least I think from a theoretical point, uh, that's what we should uh, aim. Um, what I uh, want to use my three, three minutes to talk about uh, 13. 13. <laughs> so uh, I'm holding, uh, this is a new bill and it is, uh, Asaf tells me that it's going to become a uh, law uh, uh, quite soon. It's going to revolutionize the way that executive compensation is being uh, approved in Israel. And uh, I think it, it is a say on pay. Or I, I would call it a say on policy, sometimes also say on pay. And I am a, I am a fan, not a very enthusiastic fan of say on pay, but, but still a, a, a fan. And in any case, I think that this bill is much better than the alternative that was proposed. There was another bill that was proposed by a, a member of parliament, by Shelly Yochimovich. And that bill proposed a ceiling for uh, executive compensation. I think it said something like ceiling should be 50 times uh, the salary of the median employee or the, or the, the lowest, the lowest uh, paid employee. I think uh, this, is, this would be highly unbusinesslike. Uh, it means that a firm that wants to attract a CEO cannot do that freely needs to think, well, 50 times my lower salary is below uh, uh, 50 times, is below the salary that he now gets, he will never come here, I can't pay him more, or she, uh, although she is much better for me than the other firm, this is not the way to conduct business. I think that all ceiling uh, suffer from the uh, uh, same problem. So uh, same pay uh, is supposed to improve uh, uh, monitoring in Israel specifically of minority shoulders, and I think it would have some uh, contribution. But I also take Jeff points that uh, Jeff asked Lucian uh, on on the other the other bill. Uh, do we really need it now when Israel just went under a few other uh, revolutions of corporate governance? And I think that the question is even uh, <coughs> more. Uh, um, appropriate here because there were really just now a few amendments of corporate governance including the, you know, the creation of the, of the corporate tri tribunal in the court but <coughs> also amendment 16 to the corporate code and uh, it did quite a few things that I think would improve uh, the way that pay is approved in Israel. So one thing in Israel, there is an audit committee, but it's really a self-dealing committee, or most of its uh, um, goals is to approve self-dealing transactions. And up till Amendment 16 of the Corporate Code, uh, that self-dealing committee supposedly uh, meant to improve minority, uh, minority shareholders' um, uh, uh, approval, of, uh, of self-dealing transaction. So it didn't really look like a committee that could do that. Uh, it had two uh, outside directors in most committees, and the controlling shareholder was not uh, able to see it or, the, or his uh, relatives or employees of the company. But when you came into the room and you looked at a normal committee, you would find dominant representative of the employer from his uh, uh, private companies. And they dominated the discussions in the in the committee, 
and Amendment 16 has changed that and currently in different levels all the members of uh, uh, the self dealing committee are independent and there were other improvements and I think that uh, it would take, there was also an improvement in the way that controlling, com controller sh controlling shoulder compensation is improved and I think it would affect uh, the way that ultimately also professionals managers pay is approved because if the controlling shoulder when the, he or she is a manager gets too much that it also influences the entire company uh, uh, on what uh, uh, professional executives are paid and I see, I see the, uh, the beginning of a real change in that so perhaps if we, w we could wait uh, uh, for two years we would see some improvement in the way uh, uh, pay is authorized and uh, distributed in Israel, but because the Shali Yochimovich bill is pending, probably we do not have time, we have to legislate something, we have to move forward, and uh, uh, if we accept that, I think the bill that is suggested is not a bad bill. I will just say another one, just one more minute about, about the, uh, the new proposed bill. So, it is a complicated bill. Michal told me that uh, she tried to read it on the way here. It, was, it took her more than five minutes. And uh, um, so it is not exactly a say on pay. For most ex for, so first of all, it's a say on policy. So the, uh, the uh, compensation committee and the board has to come forward with a policy of pay. But I think what's more important is the implementation of the policy. So, well, we do care that there is a policy and ceilings for payment and so on, but we really, the minority shoulders should know who is paid what and to, to opine on that. So this is the implementation of, of the policy uh, towards a specific candidate. So this is something that is absent from the law, unless it is the CO. So in, about the CO, first we have this say on policy, and then the CO could be paid according to that policy, and then there is also a say on pay on CO pay. I think this is, uh, I'm not sure what the committee had in mind, I think this is an overly complicated uh, mechanism. It also uh, has the downside of disclosing reservation values. So you must, for instance, disclose the ceiling of the bonus of the CO. So if you want that uh, ceiling uh, to be uh, your real ceiling, you need to say, let's say, we are willing to pay up to 10 million, uh, 10 million shekels of a bonus to the CEO. Later on comes the CEO. If you made a too low ceiling, you cannot change it. You cannot uh, break the ceiling. So, but if you want to pay less, your CEO al already knows your reservation value. I think it is problematic. I don't know why you need that. I would go. Uh, uh, for a very simple mechanism of say on pay and for all executives I think uh, that could uh, do the trick to be more simple. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I will also uh, say a few words about the new bill. Uh, um, but before I talk about that, uh, I want to start with um, last year's law, the uh, amendment number 16 of the, the company's uh, law, that was a precursor uh, to the current bill. Why? Because among other things, it, it introduced uh, not uh, say on pay, but rather vote, approve pay uh, requirement for executives who also happen to be controlling shareholders or their relatives. And we already start uh, seeing, we're already starting to see um, the effects. I'm actually now in the middle of collecting data uh, with uh, Professor Isha Yaffe on this very issue, and uh, we are very eager to get uh, some uh, results that we can report. Unfortunately, this is too early for me to say anything def definitive on that, but we certainly, uh, as, as uh, um, you know, the, the, the press has already. Uh, uh, reported we are already seeing an effect clearly there is an effect of lowering down uh, compensation of those executives whose uh, compensation was subject to the new uh, voting requirement their voting requirement is that the majority of the minority shareholder approve the package the compensation package what I'm curious to know is not only whether that whether the, the, the level of compensation decrease, but also, and perhaps even more importantly, whether the sensitivity of compensation to performance 
became uh, better. And you know, we can argue on what, what better means, but certainly we would like to see uh, this kind of uh, pay for performance uh, effect becoming uh, 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 stronger. Um, but now we have, uh, with the new bill, we have um, an even more, uh, 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 more far-reaching uh, proposal because now the very same uh, idea of majority of minority approval uh, will be extended not only to controlling shareholders and their relatives, but to any executive who happens to be the CEO. So, for example, a CEO of a corporation that has a controlling shareholder, but this person happens to be a professional manager who, has, who is not in any way related, uh, at least not by family, to the controlling shareholder, their salary will also be subject uh, to vote on pay. This is not advisory vote, it is binding vote. Now, this is not entirely unprecedented. Um, there is a vote, binding vote on pay uh, already uh, in uh, Norway, as far as I know, in the Netherlands, in Sweden, uh, in Italy for bank managers, if I'm not mistaken. And now there are two uh, proposals uh, that seem to be uh, great gaining traction to introduce the same binding vote on pay also in the United Kingdom and at the EU level, at the European uh, Commission. Whether the European Commission uh, will be successful, of course, depends on the European Parliament, which uh, uh, depends on the various member states' uh, uh, governments. But this remains to be seen. Now, what is unique to the Israeli uh, bill is that this is not just binding vote on pay, this is majority of minority vote on pay. So if you have a controlling shareholder with, say, 60% of the votes, it is not enough that this shareholder thinks that the salary of the professional CEO hired for the job is, is appropriate. The minority shareholders uh, have, have to also agree. And this, of course, is somewhat uh, new, um, and it raises a whole new host of questions, whether this is too much, whether the minority shareholders should also have a say, a binding say, on the salary uh, of the CEO. In a sense, they can second guess the choice of the, made by the controlling shareholder. Is this warranted? Now, there is one strong reason in my, in my mind why this is uh, this is appropriate, and the reason is that uh, the controlling shareholder, as Professor Bibchuk just <coughs> mentioned, has any number of ways of extracting private benefits of control from the corporation, not only through uh, self-dealing transactions that are subject to regulation. For example, in a pyramid, the controlling shareholder can decide how to allocate opportunities, business opportunities among the various corporations in the pyramid, and this is not subject to judicial review or to any uh, uh, voting requirement by the minority shareholders. Now, how can the controlling shareholder affect these changes? Well, the controlling shareholder has to buy the loyalty of these professional managers. And so there is a potential conflict of interest even in uh, setting the pay of these professional managers, even if this is not the controlling shareholder herself. Now, on the other hand, we would certainly not want the minority shareholders to say, well, we dislike this CEO, and so we're going to set his or her salary at zero, which is the way for us to decide to get rid of the CEO. Some, something similar to this uh, just happened several months ago, I think, at the Tadbik case, a case that all Israelis are familiar with. There was a, a controlling shareholder who was, uh, whose salary was subject to majority of minority approval. And, and the ma minority shareholder said, well, I'm going to vote against the salary package, not because the CEO, uh, because the salary was too high, in my opinion, because I just don't like the business vision of this CEO, I want to get rid of this guy, uh, and voted against it. It reached the court, and if I'm not mistaken, it's still on appeal at the Supreme Court, so we're not sure how it's going to be decided. But certainly there is a risk there um, 
for minority shareholders taking, over, taking control, in effect, over the company. How do we deal with this? Well, to some extent, the, the new bill takes care of this. It says that the ultimate final say is, in fact, not the shareholders, even in the case of the CEO, uh, the board can ultimately override the shareholders' uh, vote uh, if it uh, finds after, uh, if the board and the compensation committee, which has a majority of uh, disinterested directors, uh, uh, in fact, only disinterested directors, and some of them are even selected by the shareholders, um, if, if, if the board decides that there are special reasons to, 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 to disregard the shareholders' vote. So I think what will happen if the bill becomes law, this will be the new battleground. The courts will have to decide exactly what it means for uh, the board to uh, override the shareholders' vote. How special the cases and the circumstances need to be in order to justify this override. This is going to be a crucial uh, question. And of course, the answers that the courts will give to this depend to some extent on how the institutional shareholders will use their newly found power. If they restrain themselves, probably the courts will not be too quick uh, to grant the boards this, over, expand the overriding uh, power uh, of the board. Another uh, important question, in my opinion, and that's a kind of a doctrinal point that can prove to be in, in quite critical. When I read this uh, bill, it didn't say anything about the duration of the compensation agreement or the employment agreement that uh, uh, the CEO can have. So in principle, you could have a, an evergreen agreement that says, for as long as you're the CEO, this is how much you're going to be paid. Now, if you were quick enough to get this approved just before the new law uh, was enacted, you will never have, at least this particular CEO, you will never have to subject to, to bring this uh, compensation package to share before shareholder approval. Um, this is quite different from the way um, uh, the compensation of controlling shareholders executives uh, was set last year in Amendment Number 16. There, the law says every three years you have to get a new approval, and the shareholders have to, to have. Uh, an opportunity to vote. Um, this is probably another. Uh, I don't know if I'm. How much time do I have? On my, I'm already. We're closing. Just one okay. So. Uh, okay. One more. One last point that I want to say. There is some substitution effect here between compensation and other uh, uh, ways of extracting private benefits of control. This is, of course, relevant not so much to the executives who are not controlling shareholders. This, ex this is more important uh, uh, for the executives who are controlling shareholders. And there are a lot of those in Israel. Those are already subject to majority of minority approval requirements that were introduced uh, last year. Since the uh, Committee, uh, the Committee on uh, Improving uh, Competition uh, uh, Competitiveness, I'm sorry, in the market uh, recommended, and there is a new bill that says that within six years, all pyramids will have to have no more than three layers. We are probably going to see a lot of self-dealing transactions in the next six years where pyramids or controlling shareholders try to realign their pyramids in order to comply with the new requirements. This will be an opportunity to make up for all the executive compensation that's now more difficult for them uh, to obtain. Great. So let, let me try to challenge you. Um, from, from at least what, what I got from the three separate comments is that you seem to share the idea that, um, well, if there is such a thing as too much compensation, uh, it has to be judged uh, with the yardstick of shareholders' point of view. Uh, so it's, it's, if, if there is a problem, and, and I think there's some variation among you uh, on the issue whether there is a problem at all, uh, maybe the problem is, is with the politicians who try to change things, but, but 
supposing that there may be a problem uh, regarding executive compensation, the problem is in the relations with the uh, with the shareholders, and 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 probably the public shareholders, which in Israel are you know public minority shareholders. Um, so if correct me if I'm wrong, is is this is this the case? And if so, what do we do about all these these bills that are at least are keep being surfaced and tabled and discussed? And, and Sharon uh, mentioned, uh, I think, quite clearly uh, the situation in which we have at least two or three bills uh, sitting on different tables uh, in the Knesset, in the, in the public arena, and the, the leading one, the government bill, is in a way seen as, uh, as a measure to thwart uh, bills coming from, from other politicians, Shelly Khimovic being a prime example. Um, but, but then... Would you agree, the, th you know, the three of you, would you agree that all, th all the bills are in a sense wrong-headed? Or is say on pay kind of the, the, the second best that we can live with because it endorses the view that we're concerned about shareholders? Wrong-headed in the sense that the, the bill on the bills, bill or bills, uh, on say on pay may might be wrong-headed because they miss the real issue, the real concern in the public uh, that is sometimes voiced in the media, is, is echoed in a way here in the Times, definitely in, in, in the Israeli media. Um, so would you like to comment on, on this kind of ch challenge? Which perspective are we adopting when we say, when you are saying that one bill is better than the other, one solution is better than the other, and if we pick a particular point of view, what do we mean? What what are we, what are you saying about the other perspectives? The uh, I want to say a, a couple words about two of those uh, proposals. The first uh, was the proposal that Sharon mentioned, uh, and that was to limit to cap the maximum pay of the CEO. Uh, Shelly Yochimovich's uh, uh, proposal to pr to uh, uh, cap the CEO's uh, salary up to 50 times the lowest salary uh, in the corporation. This did not make any sense to me. Uh, there, is a, uh, there are so many different kinds of corporations. Some of them are holding companies with very small number of employees. Others have a lot of rank and file employees. Some are uh, low-tech low, low tech industry. Others are high-tech industry. Uh, they are completely. Uh, there is no comparison. There is no. There is no reason to assume that 50 uh, times is the right number. And probably there are different answers that are good for different corporations. Another proposal that was uh, floated recently was a proposal to tax uh, uh, salaries if they exceed. Uh, I'm sorry, not to tax. To uh, not recognize. Uh, um, the expense uh, for tax purposes uh, for the corporation if the uh, compensation level of the CEO exceeds a certain level. Again, there is no reason to assume that the regulator or the legislator knows best, knows what the right compensation level is for different executives at different companies. And moreover, there has been some experience with this in the United States. Uh, there are experts here that know this better than me, but. Uh, from my general knowledge, uh, under federal law, uh, 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 severance packages cannot exceed three times the annual salary of the CEO. Uh, and if they do, then there is a kind of a, a, an excise, so-called excise tax that penalizes the company uh, for paying too much. So what happens in reality? Companies just bite the bullet they pay even the tax, and so now the, sell the shareholders suffer twice. First, because they overpaid their, uh, re their, uh, the, the severance package, which is sometimes regarded as you know, compensation for failure. You leave the company and you get a, a big uh, uh, farewell gift, and the corporation just paid a very hefty tax for this. So uh, I share the concerns about the Shelley Khimovic proposal, uh, but, that, uh, I, but that doesn't mean I, I think that the CERN pay is uh, you know, the only route or sufficient or there's no need for other proposals or other routes uh, uh, to treat that. Um, CERN pay uh, 
in the U.S. Uh, hasn't been uh, a very significant constraint. As I said, only few companies have uh, um, used the, the, um, the CERNPAY path to uh, not approve compensation. So uh, I, th I understand that here is somewhat different in Israel, that the shareholders are more active in participation, but uh, at least in the U.S. Uh, it hasn't been sufficient. So um, I think that, um, as I said before, uh, you know, continue trying to improve all of the other dimensions, um, such as disclosure, independence and compensation committees, and uh, again, as Bebchuk uh, and Fritz suggested, other uh, corporate governance uh, components such as shareholder voting, uh, maybe separating the chairman and CEO, and, um, and so forth. Um, I think that um, we may have also uh, more to do about the process itself within the company in approving compensation. Uh, also in the US, uh, uh, this process uh, is, um, um, you know, some components of it are more like of a black box. Um, in some boards, the whole board approves the compensation after the compensation committee. In some boards, uh, the whole board does not. Uh, so as I said, uh, it seems like Delaware courts, the courts are going to look uh, more into that, into the black box of the pro this process. Uh, in one case, Delaware courts have found uh, uh, executives liable for negotiating his own compensation too aggressively. Uh, by trying to influence the, the committee, sitting in the meetings, uh, using um, relationship with people on compensation committee, even though they meet independence requirement, etc. So um, uh, I think that there may be more to do in that dimension, and we may see more of that happening. So, I'm not sure that I understood your, your question, but if it was. Uh, Maybe it was a stakeholders stakeholders question. Yeah, th that's that's yeah. I think that's the best way to frame it in the sense that um, it it appears to me you know, from reading at least the media uh, and you know what the politicians are saying that they are concerned about shareholders, but they're not concerned only about shareholders. So the question uh, would be: do, do they get it all wrong? I mean, don't they under don't they understand that it's all about shareholders? And if they get it wrong, what do we do to educate them to, to understand that it's all about shareholders? And, and if we can't get rid of those, you know, cries, outcries, continuing outcries from the media that this is just too much, which from shareholders' point of view might be baseless, how would you design a corporate governance system that that essentially deals with it because the, the politicians are not going away and the media is not going away I mean this is this is great stuff uh, in the United States in Israel this will have to be dealt with so essentially yes it's a stakeholder question but not That's actually okay. saying that we should take care of workers but how do we so do? M so maybe there are two questions one of them is what do we do with public views about pay and the, you know the, the feeling that pays too much yeah. how do we have to do we have to account for that. And second question is about stakeholders. If there are stakeholders that are not shareholders of the company, they might be affected by uh, executive actions. Do we have to take care about that uh, in structuring pay? So as, as for the, the first question, I think that part of the public concerns about pay are, are valuable concerns. And but the rest of it is because uh, pay is so, you know, that's the only pay that we really see. That's why uh, people care about it, that's why the, the, the media is preoccupied with about it. And I still do not understand why everyone cheers when an entrepreneur of an Israeli company gets 40 million dollars for selling uh, her company and everyone cheers, no one says let's tax her more, let's, uh, uh, let's take that's too much, why don't they give more to the employees and so on, but when a manager gets a package, well, that's too high, this is a steal and so on. So I think that the public were, was educated to think that a good manager is worth much less than a good entrepreneur. I'm not sure that I accept these views and maybe the public should be educated to, to some degree, but when I say that, I have to be careful because other concerns are, are real and, and we, should, uh, we shouldn't account for that. As, as, as Paul, as, uh, per the uh, uh, 
the other constituencies, the sta stakeholders. So I think that the normal view that, you know, the classic view that shareholders are the residual claimant and therefore taking care for them would be enough uh, uh, to improve welfare. This should be, we should still maintain, hold on to that view with a few exceptions. So one exception would be, you know, Babchuk's stake about, uh, uh, about banks and financial institutions, maybe there the residual claimants are too often not the shareholders, but maybe, you know, the entire public or at least debt holders, maybe we should account for that uh, in uh, uh, um, the way that we design exact compensation, maybe that would be one exception. But maybe we can even, uh, I'm playing around with an idea to uh, 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 increase that view to all regulators. So, of course, the financial institutions are regulated, but there are other regulators, and those regulators are actually pre preoccupied with the, with the interest of other stakeholders. So, let's take uh, the antitrust regulator. So, for an example, the antitrust regulator found that a company uh, deviated from, from guidelines or did something wrong. So one thing that we'd normally see, uh, you know, they penalize the company. But there are also many consent decrees and they agree about certain changes in the structure of the corporation. So one thing that the regulator could want to do and might be effective is to play around with the incentives of the CEO. So from now on, the regulator might require that if there is another deviation, this is the most simple uh, uh, way to play around with it. Let's say that there is a circuit breaker once there is another violation of antitrust anti, uh, anti uh, laws, then the CEO will not get the bonus that year. So I think that uh, what we see today, we use very crude incentives by the regulators to world firms. Maybe we can fine tune them and make it much more cheaper for the regulator and highly effective by playing around with executive compensation. But uh, no, for now, it's just a uh, thought.